half of Active Capital. A very warm welcome to the Q2 FY21 conference call of CDFL India Limited. Uh, at the very outset, uh, let me just take this opportunity to, to congratulate the entire team of CDFL for a spectacular uh, Q2 performance, uh, and, and consistently so. Uh, so th to take us through the nuances of the results, uh, we have the senior management here, uh, represented by Mr. Nehal Bora, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Girish Amesara, the CFO, Ms. Naina Ovlekar, COO, Mr. Sunil Alvarez, Chief Operating Officer, CDSL Ventures Limited, and Mr. Nilesh Kitur, AVD. Uh, now, without taking too much time, I will hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and uh, over to you, Nehal, sir. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, every access uh, for uh, setting up this call. I would like to wish everyone a very, very good morning. I welcome you all to the CDSL's quarterly conference call for quarter end of September 30th, 2020, and I trust... Uh, and I trust that all of you and your family members are safe and sound and secure. I am joined on this call by the other senior members of our executive management team who will, uh, who would be all happy to address any questions that you may have. So, uh, uh, for the call, I would like to first start at really uh, at the uh, macro team. CDSL continues to promote the idea of Atmanirbhar Nivesha, which is a self-sufficient uh, ing ing investor. The increase in the number of ADMAT accounts uh, created in this quarter is the highest in the history of the company. We are happy to be the uh, place as well as a market infrastructure institution from a depository standpoint where uh, the investors prefer to go. And uh, that is driven by two key things. One is that we would like to focus on the software and technology. We would like to make it as easy, secured uh, for all people to connect. And the second big theme is that our uh, systems and our platforms would like to make it as easy for the users so that they can do it themselves. And for us, these are the two key themes on which we would be building our future business. Uh, so as we all know that uh, financial numbers is something which is a kind of a byproduct of uh, the work, the platform, and the services which we are doing. And our uh, constant effort and endeavor is to ensure that our technology is new, is kind of uh, sound, safe, and secure, uh, for which more and more people, I think we have just really scratched the surface where more and more people are wanting to join the securities market ecosystem. And we believe that our uh, main effort is to create a safe, secure, and convenient platform. Uh, our hope is that our financial numbers continue to grow, but our main focus, or our main theme, is more than the financial numbers, is to provide a sustainable, consistent, safe, and secure platform where really the people at large can come to and really create that trust among the securities market ecosystem. So in terms of uh, talking about uh, uh, CDSL business in the last quarter. Uh, CDSL has seen a buoyant increase in the number of DMAT accounts. We have added around 29 lakh DMAT accounts in the last three months, taking the number of DMAT accounts to 2.61 crore. We've become the largest depository of some time now in terms of the number of DMAT accounts. And uh, we continue to grow. Our effort and endeavor is, again, to create a safe, secure, and convenient platform for which more and more people would find it very easy to link themselves with our repository. Uh, the, uh, in terms of our distribution platform, CDSL has around 
593 depository participants, which are really available in around 20,500 locations, which are across the country. This represents around 94, 95% of the PIN codes. And uh, this is uh, steadily growing, even though we have practically covered the entire span of India. Uh, these depository participants consist of all parts of the securities market ecosystem, be it clearing members, banks, custodians, and non-banking finance companies. We have also continued to uh, bring in new services in line with the requirements which are there in terms of the current COVID-19. Uh, we have been successful in creating a, a service where all the annual general meetings can be held for the video conference facility. And CDSL is really proud to pronounce that a large number of companies have used our services and continue to use our services for creating the annual general meeting platform to the video conference facility. In terms of the uh, size tag, uh, the subsidiary service of to vote to an e voting service is also growing uh, with each passing day. With this, we have also created some kind of uh, value add services for the company where we help companies communicate with the shareholders by providing an email service where they can forward their uh, documents to the shareholders in a safe, secure, and convenient manner. Uh, so uh, with this, I would like to give the, with these are my uh, uh, brief comments. Uh, so just before I hand it over, the Chief Financial Officer. I would like to thank basically all the stakeholders, be it the existing customers, DPs, issuers, regulators, as well as the entire CDSL team of the employees who have worked very hard during these unprecedented times and ensured that the, that the company continues to grow. So with these words, I hand it over to the Chief Financial Officer to take us to the financial performance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nehal. Good morning, everyone. Uh, speaking on our financials, uh, we have seen a healthy growth in this quarter with an year-on-year -year increase of 68% in our consolidated net profit. Uh, total income on a consolidated basis for the quarter, September 30th, uh, 2020, has increased by rupees uh, uh, 32 crores, which is 46% uh, at rupees 101 crore compared to 69 crores for the quarter ended uh, September 30th to 2019. Uh, similarly, the net profit after tax on a consolidated basis uh, for the quarter ended September 30th, 2020 is increased uh, by 19.81 crores, which is 68% at rupees 48.87 crore from rupees 29 crore for the quarter ended September 30th, 2019. Uh, now, talking about uh, standalone uh, uh, results, uh, total income on a standalone basis uh, for quarter September 30th, 2020 has increased by 26.5 crore, which is 51% at rupees 79.15 crore from 52.58 crores for the quarter ended September 30th, 2019. Similarly, the net profit uh, on a standalone basis uh, for the quarter ended September 30th, 2020 has increased to six, uh, increased by 16.11 crores, at, which is 73% uh, increase, 2 rupees 38 crores from uh, rupees 22 crores for the quarter ended September 30th, 2019. Uh, with this, uh, I will hand over to uh, Sri Sunil Alwaris to give an update about the operation of our wholly owned subsidiary, uh, Mr. CDSL Ventures Limited. Over to you, Sunil. Thank you. Uh, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. A yeah. uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, a warm welcome to all the participants this morning. Uh, I am Sunil Alvarez, the Chief Operating Officer of CDSL Ventures Limited. Uh, we are very happy to inform that due to the extremely buoyant market conditions, 
cereals uh, KRA volume increased by 117% as compared to the first half of uh, FY2020. Uh, the number uh, of KYC. Can you just uh, speak up a little bit? It's a little soft. Yeah, sure. The KYC records in CVL increased uh, from 14.57 lakhs to, oh, sorry, uh, to 14.57 lakhs from 6.7 lakhs to close at 243 lakhs as on 30th September 2021. 20. Uh, KYC records which were first increased from 26, uh, increased by 26.11 percent from 35 uh, lakhs. Uh, Sorry, 235 lakhs from 28 lakhs. Uh, the CKYC records what we processed, there was a marginal dip to uh, 5.84 lakhs from 6.74 lakhs. The number of RTA companies which we have serviced on a cumulative basis has increased to 539 as of uh, 30th September as compared to 296 companies as on 30th September 2020. Uh, we are also processing the DDU claims of the PMJJBY scheme, which has increased by 109%. That is, uh, this year we processed in the first half 50,910 records as compared to 24,350 records. Uh, coming to the financials uh, of uh, Q2 FY 2021 as against uh, Q2 FY 2020, the revenue from operations in uh, Q2 FY 2021 increased to 18.65 crores from uh, 13 crores. That was an increase of 5.65 crores or 43.46%. Uh, uh, the total in income increased uh, from uh, 16 crores to 21.08 crores. That was an increase of uh, 4.97 crores or overall 30.97 percent. The overall expenses, which were uh, 5.98 crores, increased to 7.18 crores in this quarter. And uh, the profit after tax for this quarter was uh, 10.54 crores, has against from 7.61 crores. That was an increase of almost 39 percent. Uh, with this, uh, I'd like to hand over the mic back to Axis Capital to take the meeting forward. Oh, so shall we open up for Q&A? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Kunal Thanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Neil, for the opportunity and uh, many congratulations to the entire team for a very good performance. And uh, I hope everybody is uh, safe and fine. Uh, my first question relates to, you know, uh, I just wanted a sense on uh, granular revenue breakup. I understand that we have put in this time around in the presentation between, uh, say, uh, transaction charges and annual issue charges. I wanted to understand more in terms of how much it came from, say, IPO and how much was from pledge. And specifically in the pledge business, what was the contribution of one-time uh, pledge revenue and what was uh, what is something that is a recurring uh, revenue that occurred in the quarter? Uh, and second portion is on, uh, you know, uh, if you look at uh, the presentation, we have talked about... Uh, increase in the data provision. So can you just throw some light and give some color on, you know, how should one read into it, uh, whether it is one time, uh, you know, acceleration, uh, and how, what would be the normal run rate for that? And the third portion is on the uh, national education uh, NAD, which, you know, we had dropped, uh, we were uh, not given that project from the government uh, in last financial year. 
However, I hear that you know uh, CBSE still is trying to you know monetize the same project. Any thoughts on the same would be really helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, on your first question, I'll ask the CFO to answer. But before I go on to him, I just give you a broad perspective that um, uh, the new system of the margin pledge is more is not really one time income it's a new way of where the security market to interrupt your voice is breaking uh so you can hear me now uh yes a little okay. uh one minute one minute yeah so you can hear me now uh yes really yes sir Thank yeah you. so uh in terms of uh uh the new system it's a new way of doing uh the business in the securities market uh, in terms of the way the securities would be pledged and uh, these uh, this is expected to go on uh, as a normal routine income basically every month uh, we do not provide uh, uh, because these are yet very uh, basically the early times as to how much would be the trends on that uh so it's part of the overall thing income which we are taking that the first so before i hand it over to the chair to give you more of the details i'll answer your uh, uh i'll answer basically the other question you had in terms of the provision so i think on the whole the provisions we've had uh, reasonably uh, in terms of the times which we are in uh There has been some amount of a slowdown in terms of the operates in which they have to pay the fees to us, but uh, we are very very hopeful because uh, as we have seen towards the later part of the quarter that a lot more companies have actually come back and paid to us. So there is really a standard uh, a standard operating uh, process that if you don't pay the fees. There are certain kinds of basically the actions which would be played. So we are hopeful that probably it'll be slightly late. So in terms of ensuring that the financial statements are true, other we have increased the provision. But we are hopeful that by the end of the year, we should be able to be at the same levels as uh, has been in the previous year. Uh, so the first uh, query, I'll hand it over to the CFO. and uh, then after that uh, on the mad alas uh, sunil uh, to really directly answer the question sure thank you so uh, uh, at the outset uh, we had, i had informed that the total income is 101 crore out of which uh, 89 crores is uh, total uh, operating revenue which is 88% of total income uh, the break up of uh, uh, operating revenue is uh, Uh, transaction charge of uh, 31 crore which is 34 34% 34 of operating revenue annual issuer charge of uh, 22 crore which is uh, 24% of our total operating revenue then comes uh, online data uh, charges which is pertaining to cbl which is uh, 13 crore uh, 15% of total operating revenue uh, ipo corporate action is around 7 Uh, 7.8 crore which is 9% of our total operating revenue uh, e voting charges are uh, 4.38 uh, uh, crores which is 5% of our total operating revenue and uh, the statement cash statement that we send which is around uh, 1.85 crore which is 2% of uh, our total revenue this covers almost 90% of our total revenue and uh, remaining are uh, other other charges uh, i hope i have answered your question Sure, that is answered. So, uh, uh, if the third question we answer by Sunil, yeah. Uh, so far as the National Academic Depository Project is concerned, you may be aware that uh, the MHRD and UGC have now appointed DigiLocker to implement this project. Uh, so both the depositories will not be handling this project anymore. But since we already have a sunk cost and we have a domain expertise of almost. Uh, Ten years on this project, we decided to we decided to offer our services as a private service provider, 
to uh, to many of the academic institutions primarily because when we uh, when we used to visit these academic institutions to admit their uh, their uh, awards into the into the academic depository we found that many of them required help in creating the awards etc so we are looking at as an opportunity to uh, you know provide our services as a private service uh, provider and so far we have uh, about 10 academic institutions have uh, you know shown their interest and signed up with us which we think is a good beginning on this how many academic institutions sorry i missed that so far about 10 have signed up okay so uh, basically we will be uh, charging for it whereas didi locker and the government uh, you know they won't be charging it so it would be the service yeah. service that would differentiate us from them that's right so so in case we sign up anybody they have to uh, you know accept our charges only then we will be onboarding them sure sure that is uh, really helpful uh, i'll get back in the queue i have sure, sure. thanks yeah thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call please limit your questions to one per participant for any further questions you may come back for a follow up the next question is from the line of varun goenka from nippon mutual fund please go ahead yes uh, good morning everybody and uh, uh, our dearest congratulations for a super set of numbers for last 6 months i mean for both the quarters uh, i had two questions one uh, if you could again come back to the same uh, Uh, answer we've been asking you for last uh, so many quarters that why is CDSL really uh, accelerating its market share versus uh, peer? Uh, what is it uh, that is working for it? Uh, maybe some comments on the systems or where is the market share coming from? Uh, you know, maybe some of the newer uh, newer age brokers are we gaining share there? Uh, your comments will help. And secondly, our annual issuer charges. i think they get uh, they come up for revision every 5 years and that is next year uh, some comment uh, there will help sure so uh, on the first one as i had answered in the last investor call we are a market infrastructure institution our intent is to create a more sophisticated technology savvy easy to use services and platforms uh, so how many people would like to use would be the value add or the value which they see in a platform vis a vis the uh, basically the other platforms uh, so where we see ourselves uh, is we are our focus as well as uh, is to ensure that we give the most sophisticated services and platforms at a reasonable cost and uh, try to create more for value uh, proposition for anybody who is wanting to come within our platform and that is in my in my considered opinion and this is a personal opinion is the reason why more and more people are wanting to come and uh, come on to the CDSL platform uh, our focus is not to increase uh, the number of people but to ensure that our platform remains safe secure and relatively easy to use uh and uh what it acts in terms of volume of people wanting to is kind of uh leading on because our intent is to create the safe secure uh, platform which we have that's number one in terms of the issue of fees uh this is something which uh, we uh, would have to take into uh consideration yes we are due for an increase uh but uh, i don't know whether uh, given the circumstances which we are in uh, where most of the companies have not really grown to the extent that they should have uh, whether we would uh, want to increase it in this year or uh, we'll have to see whether it will postpone it by some time so that is something which uh, we believe uh, is within is not within our control is within the control of us uh, ready but however our uh, focus as well as our intent is that we continue to basically 
model of company onto our fold so that even if the revenue remains constant, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, even if the rate remains constant, the total income would continue to grow. Right. Just to uh, clarify on the first point of CSL gaining share, are there any particular uh, uh, measurements that you benchmark against, for example, turnaround time in account opening? Is yours significantly better versus the peer, uh, or the downtime in systems much lower than uh, the peer? Uh, is are there any? Uh, there are. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, there are various means in which we will be constantly seeing the systems are uh, really creating the value for the person using it. And it will be difficult to really list down each one of them. Uh, it's more of creating a platform and an ecosystem which constantly creates value for the person at a low cost. And I think that's really our focus as well as our endeavor. We have an inclusive approach. So the number of depository participants, for example, at CDSL are far much higher than our competition. So our intent is to bring in more and more people into our ecosystem. And then we see uh, and constantly... Uh, I'm sorry, your last value. point was not completely audible. Your voice was cracking. If you could repeat that, please. I'm saying the number of depository participants which we have right, right. in ESL is far higher than our competition. So we have sure. basically an inclusive approach. Uh, so, so again, our focus is to ensure that we create a technology platform which is easy to use, safe and secure, and then kind of leave it to the market to uh, really figure out where they will find more value in going. Sure, I'll come back uh, in the queue with more questions. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Latta from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, so am I audible very well? Yes, you are. Okay. So uh, just wanted to understand on the transaction revenue. So can you some color like what was the number of transactions we had this quarter? And these are why the number of transactions that the overall market has reported. Uh, how has been our trend in number of transactions? So like what was the number of transactions we did in Q1? What was the total number of transactions in the market? And is there any way can we capture this data in terms of number of transactions happening in the market? Uh, first thing was that. Second thing, of the 2.6 crore DMAT account holder, what is the active DMAT account we have? And how this number was in Q1 and same quarter last year? How this number was? Okay. And uh, and lastly, yeah. on the on the pledge revenue, sir, if you can quantify how much was the the pledge revenue this quarter? Yeah. So uh, in terms of uh, the transaction revenue, is uh, a mixture of many many things. It's in not only the amount of transfers which take place. It's uh, so it'll be difficult to quantify and put it as one single number because that will not lead to the proper conclusion in terms of the growth because it's a mixture of many, many such variables which are out there. Uh, so in terms of that, in terms of the number of DMAT accounts, uh, we grew at around 29 lakh uh, in this quarter, uh, around 90 to 20 lakh involved in the previous quarter. And uh, in the last, in the same quarter last year, it was basically, uh, 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 I think, around seven to eight lakhs. There has been a significant number of DMAX accounts which have been opened during this previous quarter. And as I mentioned in my speech, this has been really the highest number of DMAX accounts which have been opened in a particular quarter. Uh, yeah. yeah. So your third question on uh, the revenue of the pledge, uh, margin pledge. I think, as I said, it will be really early times. Uh, it will not be fair to really put out those numbers because 
this has uh, only started on the first of uh, September. So it is one month into this particular week. And what we give is kind of a uh, picture in terms of the transaction revenue. However, I leave it over to the CFO if he can give any further details that we have given out. So, in terms of active DMAT account, you didn't indicate that after 2.6 crore DMAT account, we have how, what proportion is active DMAT account on that? I think a significant portion would be any active DMAT account, significant portion. You know, we don't have an actual number which we put out, but it's a really big high number, which is really active. Uh, and so on the transaction charges, uh, does the transaction charges also include includes the pledging charges? Or this is. I'm sorry, can you come again? You have also. The transaction charge of 30 odd code rupees, which we have reported, does this include the pledging charges as well? And what are the other variable charges in the transaction charges? So, apart from the transfer charges, uh, pledging is included, and what other. So, I'll ask the CFO to answer this. Yes, I can answer this. So the uh, margin place charges are including uh, in the transaction charges uh, revenue that uh, I had shared earlier. And uh, if you look at our website uh, on the charges, you will come to know what all are included in the transaction charges. It's a quite uh, long list, so uh, I would request you to go through the website. Uh, so, uh, so I think you can just name two or three names, the uh, ones which are there. So that is basically have I think the main one or two. Hello. Uh, yes. That that's okay, sir. That's from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Anivet Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, congrats to the entire team for uh, the good work which has been continuing for last many, many quarters. I had, you know, two questions. Uh, one, if I look at our OPEX, it is down around 3% in, you know, the first half. So, uh, apart from employee cost, any major items which are seeing a downward trend and where, you know, we've negotiated some of the cost due to the COVID, if you can share some insights and, you know, second off, how do these uh, costs look like? And secondly, you know, despite we seeing a robust 67, 68% profit growth, uh, our cash flow from operations in the first half is just up 28%. So any specific items which are seasonal in nature and, you know, will reverse in the second half and cash flow also should improve in the second half or by the year end. Yeah, so I would just ask the uh, CFO, Jerry Shift can answer those two questions. Uh, with respect to the six month expenditure that you are comparing, if you recall, we last year we had an uh, 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 SEBI uh, PSL project uh, uh, done in the in the subsidiary uh, CDSL Ventures Limited. Uh, the cost towards that was around six and a half crore, uh, which is uh, you know compensating. Which is not there uh, uh, during this quarter. Okay. In the entire second half, it's not there, right? Yes, yes, the yes, second yes, second yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. And and assuming that that doesn't come, this you know muted cost should continue in the second half as a trend. Uh, uh, that would be uh, that would be a forecasting. So yeah, we are we don't give any future uh, thing. But uh, I think as a overall team, our uh, basic effort is to ensure that uh, we keep our costs under control. However, there will be certain increased costs as we go forward. So we we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And on the cash flow, Girish, if you can give some color. See, basically, uh, we uh, during this uh, first half, uh, cash flow wise, uh, we have not incurred any major capital expenditure so uh, uh, it may continue uh, it may remain uh, at this place uh, this particular level okay. Okay. I was looking at operating cash flow 
not not the capex or you know investing or free cash flow i was just looking at operating cash flow uh, so uh, uh, let me let me come back on this sure sure and, and lastly you know sunil mentioned you know there was uh, ekyc you know there was uh, some increase and you know kyc also is seeing an increase so is ekyc an ancillary to kyc and for growing ekyc business is kyc business the right matrix to look at or ekyc is a separate uh, business model and a potential revenue by itself no it is basically a part of one thing. it's a way of doing it you have a physical uh, way of doing and know your client or you have a e way of and know your client but this will become kind of uh, easier for it to open i'll ask sunil to answer that question though. yeah do answer your question e kyc would be a separate business head by itself in cvs and uh, uh, it will facilitate the number of kycs which ultimately get added to the kr so if somebody does an e kyc or he does a physical kyc ultimately it has to get added to the kr so the way uh, the the world is moving to a digital mode currently e kyc will definitely facilitate the number of kyc into the kr that is how we are looking at it i hope that answers your question now and is is sunil a possibility of you know tapping or cross selling this business to banks or other financial institutions given the way the world is is that a business opportunity which can be thought of it it is a business opportunity on paper but right now uh, as for the regulations of uidi uh, if i onboard anybody the entity i have to recommend that entity to sebi and sebi will uh, recommend that entity to uidi and uidi to dfs and that's how they will get the registration now given that sort of a situation if that entity is not registered with sebi i will not be able to recommend it to sebi so i think right now it will be limited only to capital market intermediaries okay thanks a lot i'll join back yeah thank you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of hitain jain from investco asset management please go ahead Yeah, yeah, I have a question on uh, on your other expenses. Uh, so, um, uh, admin and other expenses up uh, sequentially by twenty six percent, and uh, tax expenses up uh, sequentially by forty two percent. So, can you just explain uh, what is uh, what is driving this? I'm sorry, then your voice was not clear. Can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, am I audible now? Hello. Yeah, you are audible, but your voice is a little. Uh, it is not actually clear. So some some parts of your questions were not really understood. So you can just speak. Yeah. 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 Uh, my question was on other expenses. Uh, so from your presentation, uh, where you are giving the various heads uh, of expenses, uh, the tech expense is up sequentially by I think twenty percent, more than twenty percent, and same as admin and other expenses. so can you just uh, explain this cost items are they linked to some revenue sources yeah so i think uh, as i said earlier our entire uh, depository operation is going to be based on uh, so in enhancing our uh, sophistication and uh, basically it and technology so there is going to be uh, a constant uh, in endeavor to ensure that our platforms become easy to use and therefore that is going to translate into some amount of the expense being spent on the software hardware as well as basically the applications which we have and that's why there is a uh, so there is an increase and it's done done in a very very uh, 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 it's done in a manner so that it will give a long term play in terms of ensuring the ease of the operation as uh, well as the admin costs uh, Includes also some of basically the SMSs which we are required to send. Uh, these are the new kinds of uh, platforms which are going to come up, and uh, SEBI has asked both the depositories to send basically the SMS uh, for each transaction which is going to be done, and now it's being mandatorily done through this particular system. So that has caused a slight increase in terms of the admin. 
uh, understood and another question was while you answered that uh, but just wanted some more clarity on this uh, provisions for doubtful debt so while that is up 100% year on year uh, you also said that it will reverse at the end of the year uh so i mean so i'm assuming that the accounting is the way not going to reverse i'm saying we are hopeful given that the situation is such that most companies because of the national lockdown there are most companies which were not working but shut down so slowly they have started to open up and we are hopeful that these fees would get uh, but sir even sequentially the number is quite up Uh, the quite high so even in one quarter first quarter 21 also lockdown was there so is it that there was some seasonal element here yeah the fees are charged uh, at uh, for the entire year for the company so that happens in the end of the first quarter and beginning of the second quarter so there will be in terms of how much payment people are making in terms of that we start seeing but as the year uh, progresses this is what we have seen in the past that uh, normally companies to pay off and uh, we come down to kind of a steady number which comes up there uh, basically the amount which we are able to recover understood and this is quite clear thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of yash nerurkar from ppfas mutual fund please go ahead Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so basically, I just had to uh, like uh, get a clarification on the point which you mentioned earlier uh, about the digital locker and the NAD which you, you guys are running. So uh, since the project is handed over to digital locker, uh, you said you have signed like roughly ten institutions, and uh, digital locker won't be charging them, whereas you, you guys will be charging them. So could you just elaborate on like how exactly is it going to work? Because if Digi Locker is running uh, these services for like you know without a charge, uh, so how would it work for you guys? Yeah, so I'll ask Pranil to answer that. Uh, see, currently uh, Digi Locker is still setting up its infrastructure, and it takes some more time for them to really set up what, uh, the academic repository because it took us almost three years, and they have to set it up from scratch. That is point number one. Point number two is when why we are offering this service to academic institutions. It's basically many of them are still holding their awards in the physical form and all of that. So it's like a back office what we are creating for the uh, these academic institutions where they can hold these awards in the digital form. And if later on they want to share it with Digi Locker, they can uh, do it. That's not a problem. But in the interim, like if a student wants to uh, verify the awards or uh, The, or uh, verifier wants to verify it is already available with us, and uh, and uh, he has a choice of uh, you know verifying it through us or with digital locker has an any. But if he does it through us, there will be a charge applicable. As of now, the awards what we have are not available in digital locker. Okay, so in a way, if you're going forward, you would be sort of competing with digital locker. No, we are not really competing with them. Huh? I mean, we be charging and they are not charging anything, so it's not really competing with them. We are basically facilitating, uh, you know, academic institutions to convert their award into the uh, digital format, and there will always be a, uh, you know, what to say, phase where we will be converting and then they will be uploading. So during that phase, I think that is where many of the students will be able to access and verify their award. Okay. and ultimately the way like to give you another example is between the ckyc and the kra so the ckyc just charges 1 rupee per uh, record for fetching and we charge 35 rupees many of the intermediaries are very comfortable fetching it from kra because they can because they can depend on the that particular uh, you know the veracity of the data okay got it uh and secondly uh, also what i wanted to know about about is uh, the uh, the infrastructure which you guys are building so most of that is in a house right so you talking about the you talking about the academic deposit you know it's the same no, no, infrastructure no, no. we are talking about the whole general technological piece so yeah yeah our entire yeah yeah our entire technology is being owned by cdsl we have uh, basically the outside software vendors as well as the hardware providers which kind of link up but uh, the entire technology is owned by us okay okay so just a last small question uh, because in the past uh, you know ever since march since the lockdown has happened we had seen this uh, you know astronomical growth in the number of demat accounts opened so has that growth sort of uh, tapered down or 
you're seeing the same kind of uh, growth even in this quarter and like this month as well no so see i will not able to talk about this month and uh, whatever we will put out we'll put out on the cdsl site website but uh, that is what i said that uh, second quarter has seen really the highest number of dmat accounts in basically basically the history of the company so uh, there has been a growth over the first quarter also thank you participants we may request you to please limit your questions to one per participant for any further questions you may come back for a follow up the next question is from the line of ashutosh sumani from jm financial please go ahead thanks uh, so thanks for taking my question and thanks for the suggestion uh, incorporating the suggestion of uh, having the revenue break up in the slide i yeah, just wanted a clarification have i heard you correct on the e voting uh, charges being 4.38 crore in this quarter that's right and what was it last quarter uh, last it, 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 it was it was 2.48 crore in september 2019 quarter and uh, uh, 17 uh, lakhs in june 20 quarter Okay, so sir, there is a, a clear, significant jump uh, from a YOY perspective in e-voting charges, right? I, I remember this used to be below four crore on an annual basis in fiscal 20, and now it is uh, four crore on a quarterly basis. So you see a lot more traction in e-voting. So I think uh, this is where we see that because of the uh, virus which has happened. covid-19 crisis more and more people are really using these kind of platforms uh, as we see uh but what is seen is that a lot of people are finding basically the ease of doing it from their homes rather than having to come to the physical location so i do expect that once you're used to a certain ease of doing things it should probably uh go on even after things really basically open up uh so but what we have seen over the previous year is that there are a, a number of companies which are doing that uh, service with us has also significantly increased and that is partially because there has been a national lockdown etc and also that the systems have been fairly simple to get the access and people have found it extremely easy and secure thank you The next question is from the line of Praveen Guru from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Uh, thank you for taking my question and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is around the pledge uh, revenue. So, can you give an update that you know what are the number of pledges which are getting created in the system right now? So, uh, by right now, I mean that after Q2. Uh, FY21, and uh, then how sustainable this pledges have been till date? Uh, can we can we get some clarity on it? So we don't uh, uh, we don't have the actual number of margin pledges which are uh, being set out on the website. So I'm sorry, I'm not able to give you the number of uh, margin pledges. but all i can say is that uh, the system of margin pledges is real is basically uh, in here to stay uh, it is the way of doing business going forward and there is definitely a value proposition in terms of ensuring that the uh, b or the beneficial owner is able to see that whether its shares are actually getting pledged repledged to the trading member clearing member or the clearing corporation so it's bringing in a lot of transparency into the system it's also ensuring that uh, only once the pledge flag has been removed can we uh, sell the securities so this kind of an unauthorized sale which could happen as would not happen so it's making the entire system very safe and secure and also bringing the transparency so i think uh, given all these factors and plus there is a uh, uh, basically a uh, sebi has mandated that this is the only way of doing things so this system is basically here to stay thank you 
The next question is from the line of Alok Shah from Monarch Network. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity and sir, uh, congratulations on the set of numbers. Uh, you know, my question pertains to an extension of your last answer on pledge part. Uh, while it might be difficult for you to really break down uh, the numbers and uh, guide us with transaction charges, take pledge uh, uh, revenue. But when I look at the first half numbers over, say, for that matter, FI20, uh, there's been a meaningful amount of uh, increase. Uh, and that's been a factor of multiple uh, aspects. Trying to sustain this, maybe in not FI21, uh, but FI22, uh, what do you see that as a possibility? possibility? Uh, and, you know, would you kind of try and give some thoughts on how do you kind of see the transaction to this line item uh, move forward? So we don't give any future... Uh statements on how this will pan out in the subsequent quarters. Our focus and our endeavor is to ensure, as I said, the uh, moment the infrastructure of a DMAT account is created and it creates a value um, proposition, uh, the, basically the hope is that the securities market as the volumes grow, that is going to lead to a significant increase also in the number of DMAT transactions. But uh, I'm sorry, we will we would not be able to give any kind of uh, uh, basically reply in terms so, of whether this can. Okay, so I take your point, sir. But at least, can you share some thoughts on uh, while you have disclosed the number of beneficiary accounts which have got added, uh, and somewhere during the conversation you also mentioned the percentage of active clients. Uh, would that? also have shown a meaningful increase? I mean, you know, you have a 2.6 crore video account, uh, of which say at any point 20%, 30% uh, actively trading. Has that number gone up uh, to the same extent or a higher extent? So again, it's very difficult to give a overall uh, principle, but I think what has been seen is that a uh, lot of people which earlier used to basically open a particular account and wait for some time before they transact. That uh, in overall timeline has basically, uh, the general trend has been that people generally trade as soon as they really open the DMAT accounts. So uh, that is what we are seeing, that more and more people are, and, and that can be seen in the overall volumes also in the market, that the volumes in the stock exchanges have also increased significantly over last year. The delivery-based volumes in terms of the value has also gone up significantly over the previous year. So these are some of the trends which we see. And uh, we are hopeful that this will continue. The important thing is we are creating the uh, sophistication, the structure, and the value so that more and more people will continue to use that platform. Uh, so this is helpful. Uh, I'll come back in the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Goenka from Nippon Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you for taking my question again. Uh, uh, so could you help us understand over the next two, three years, what could be our major investment areas? Uh, uh, both uh, in terms of numbers and also the areas that we're looking to invest. See, I don't think we'll give you the numbers because we don't talk about the future. That's uh, part of our overall uh, strategy and policy also. Uh, but uh, in the broad areas, uh, software technology is going to be a core area. Uh, cyber security is going to be another very, very important area because there is a, a push from SEBI also. And we also feel that as the number of accounts grow, this is a very important part to be really continuously being basically enhanced. Uh, these are the two or three key areas. And obviously, we need uh, the sophistication of the uh, basically the employees. So uh, these are very, very specialized employees which are there, uh, which are needed out here. So as our uh, 
uh, keep operations grow, we will need that kind of. So really, the employee cost, technology cost, and the uh, cyber security cost are key. One of the three key areas that we will continue to grow. Sure, sure. And uh, <clears throat> because our uh, uh, treasury yields are falling, obviously, uh, you know, it, it's getting lesser and lesser. Uh, attractive to keep it in fixed income. So, uh, uh, what are we looking to do towards our payout ratios or as such? Uh, uh, what do you mean by the payout ratio in what we pay the shareholders in terms of? Yes, dividend. dividend? Uh, so, yeah. that we have really an overall policy. I think if things go okay. And the other thing which is worthwhile to note if uh, the percentage of total income which relies on this is very low the uh, treasury part of the total income is is not really significantly high uh, it's basically the operating income which really is uh, driving that and uh, we are uh, a payout ratio is basically based on the percentage of basically the operating income and the operating of profits which we have. So I right. think on a, uh, I think we we should be able to ensure that we would be able to have the same amount as we go forward. But this is something that we'll see in the future. Okay. And would we have any role in the account aggregator uh, initiative that has been under works that is probably uh, that will probably see the light of the day? Uh, that will have to be seen how that really uh, goes forward. It would be very difficult to comment till the formal structure okay. is really approved. And any movement on the uh, proposed thing of a single account for all financial instruments? Uh, yeah, so again, you... work in um, progress. Uh, we'll okay. see how it goes forward, but this is yet work in progress. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Jain from Whitestone Financial Advisor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. So most of my questions are answered. I just missed one thing. Uh, when you were saying, uh, what is the online data charges for the quota? I missed that too. Aras, a CFO. Yeah, uh, it is... Uh, it is 13 crore uh, uh, online data charges for September 2020 compared to 8.1 crore in uh, uh, September 2019. Okay, uh, so uh, when you see this other operating income uh, of uh, 37 crore other operation income, so this 37 crore uh, includes online data charges which is 13 crore and IPO which is around 8 crore and e-voting which is around 5 crore so that totals up to 25-26 crore so what would be the other 9-10 crores? See basically we recover uh, so uh, uh, other other charges from uh, depository participants like user facility charges, settlement charges, account maintenance charges then uh, uh, other small charges so uh, all these small charges put together uh, are around 10% uh, and uh, almost 90% area I had covered in my initial question. Do you want me to again repeat it? No, no, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. one, one yeah. more question, sir. Um, uh, uh, this e-voting charges that we have, uh, this also includes the online AGNs that we are conducting. Uh, that is also part of the e-voting charges if we are charging companies for online AGNs that we are conducting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, we will be taking the last question from the line of Devansh Nagotia from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just a couple of questions. Uh, so one is, uh, in case of a non-payment of annual issuer charges, can you help us understand how does the uh, compliance work? I mean, let's say after what period of time, what actions, uh, you know, happen for non-payment. Uh, second is, uh, if you can just elaborate on the relationship with Upstocks and Phi Paisa. So for Zaroda, we know that they are exclusively with us, but the second and third uh, discount brokers, I mean, are they on both the platforms or they are with NSDL? And also, you can, if you can help us understand what is our wallet share with both of them. Uh, 
Um, thirdly, in case of EAGM, I mean, uh, so there have been uh, some AGMs which were supposed to happen in June, which did not happen, and then uh, they are postponed to September, and which were already supposed to happen in September, they did happen. So any number, like percentage of uh, the AGMs for the quarter, which happened in this quarter, so remaining, uh, what is the remaining portion? Uh, so if you can just help us understand uh, these yeah, things. See, we don't comment on uh, specific people, whether they are with CDSL or not, on clients and customers, because I think that is uh, privy to uh, the, basically uh, how we are doing. The important thing is that we are ensuring that we are creating a value proposition for our platforms. And uh, I think... Uh, Basically, each of the people are free to go to whoever they wish to, and wherever they see value, they are going to come there. Uh, it'll be difficult for me to give you that answer, whether so-and-so person is on the platform or not. Uh, sorry, what was your first question? I'm sorry, I've missed that. So, I mean, how does the compliance work? Let's say, so there have been yeah, some bad deaths, yeah. and these generally yeah. so happen for... Uh, SEBI prescribed compliance. Uh, is a standard uh, in operating uh, procedure that if you uh, would not pay then you know there are certain uh, shareholding patterns which they are re required to file their compliances would also would not be available and hence uh, to really ensure that they would need to pay up otherwise they would not have the shareholding patterns with them okay so, uh -huh. this is a broad uh, standard operating procedure Okay, and in case of EAGM, I mean, uh, if, if you, like, I mean, because uh, there have been some pent up uh, for June, which did not happen. So if you can comment the yeah, percentage. they have now further been... extended it by three months. MC has extended by three months. So the basically AGM season should continue for another three months. Uh, oh. So uh, this is something which is going to uh, go on till that particular final date is there. And normally our trend has been that most companies wait till the last date in September to finish their engagement. Uh, but now since there has been an 